like anyone else who isn't a scientist or who isn't working in a specific discipline, I need to rely as best I can on what seems to be the best science that's being done in a given area. Now, the fact that you're not a scientist doesn't mean that you can't do some evaluation of what the scientific perspectives are. It doesn't mean you need to uncritically accept everything that uh, the scientific establishment is saying. But I do believe, uh, and, and you know, if you take my class on theology and science, I'll, I'll go into these per perspectives a little bit more. I do believe that Christian theology needs to do its best to try to understand the best uh, scientific knowledge that we have available and to try and incorporate that and deal with that in our efforts to understand better our theological positions. Um, I don't think it's appropriate for Christian theology to have its own alternative science. I don't, I don't think it's appropriate for Christian theology to simply ignore or dismiss the best science of the day. I do believe that the scientific enterprise is one that is engaged in um, an effort at philosophical realism, and I think philosophical realism is important to Christian theology. We believe creation is real and has an existence and has a givenness to it because of how God created it. And because of that, that means that we it has a regularity that we can study. That also doesn't mean we need to accept all of the philosophical presuppositions of modern science. I think there are some uh, philosophical aspects of uh, naturalism, certainly, that are uh, very much mistaken. Um, but we can reject naturalism without rejecting realism. In fact, I think to adopt a posture of realism, you really have to reject a rigid kind of naturalism. All of that is to say, I think we need to try to take the best scientific literature that is available and to try and understand it. And I think this is really difficult um, in, an, in a few hot-button areas, including this area of homosexuality, because there uh, have been, I think, some uh, advocacy groups and other people um, within the church, within a Christian context, who've been uh, trying to advance claims that are supposedly based on science that are really um, not based on very good science or on very good research or reasoning. So, what is the very best uh, science that is available to us? It does seem that sexual orientation has a genetic component. Um, there are a number of studies that do suggest that people who experience homosexual orientation, um, uh, on the whole, have some differences in some of their genetic makeup. So it is fair to say that you know, broadly speaking, and, you know, when we talk about things like this, um, you really aren't necessarily looking at any one particular case or saying that this is necessarily true in every individual case, but you're looking at, uh, you know, kind of a distribution of findings, and you're saying kind of on the whole in this distribution of findings, this is a fair conclusion. So sexual orientation does have a genetic component. At the same time, it's really inaccurate to speak of a gay gene. And I think most, um, you know, geneticists and other researchers really seriously working in this field would, would agree with this. Um, you know, this is not a contrarian claim about the science, but it's just a, a statement about what we really can say about the science of genetics. Genes affect our behaviors. Genes don't in an absolute sense, control all of our behaviors. Genes um, are expressed uh, within the body and affect our, our makeup, obviously our physical makeup, our, and affect our emotional makeup, but they don't necessarily determine it. So sexual orientation does have a genetic component. It's really inaccurate, however, to speak of a, a gay gene that determines absolutely sexual orientation. Environment and culture do affect human behaviors, including our sexual behaviors. So the kind of um, family we are raised in, the kind of culture we are raised in, what our, what our culture um, perhaps uh, permits, what our culture perhaps uh, requires to be kept under wraps, 
are all going to affect in complex ways sexual behaviors. So it is fair to say that um, if a person is experiencing uh, same-sex attraction, homosexual orientation, uh, that there's likely to be an aspect of their culture, of their background, of their upbringing that interacts in complex ways with their genetic makeup uh, and that in some way does affect um, their outlook and, and their behaviors. It is inaccurate, however, to suggest that all or most gay people uh, have suffered from abuse or have suffered from deficiencies of upbringing. Um, there you know, has been and continues to be um, some uh, groups that oppose um, homosexuality in a very strong way, some of them Christian or other religious groups, uh, that try to come out with studies suggesting that uh, in large part homosexual orientation is the result of childhood abuse. And that's simply not true. Um, th those studies are, are that come forward from those groups um, in large part have been debunked and are not really very well supported in the scientific literature. Now, that is not to say that um, confusion about sexuality, that uh, difficulties in uh, sexual behaviors can't or don't have roots in uh, things like abuse or, or difficulties when someone is young. Certainly, those kinds of things affect us as we grow older, and they can affect our sexuality. Um, and certainly there are people who um, are experiencing difficulties or confusion about their sexuality that uh, has at least some roots in that kind of um, experience when they're younger. But it is not true to say that, on the whole, homosexual orientation is the result of childhood abuse. There are also studies suggesting that there are meaningful differences in the brains of gay people compared to straight people. Um, differences in the way their brain, the brains respond, differences even in the structure of the brain. Um, now, we have to be careful with this. Again, these are, uh, you know, kind of limited numbers of studies showing some, uh, some, some tendencies, some overall trends. It doesn't mean that any one given uh, gay person has a particular kind of brain or something like that. We also have to be careful about this because there is not a suggestion here that the brains of gay people are, are in some way grossly abnormal or damaged or something like that. There's simply differences. There are a variety of differences um, that we can look at in people's brains that do have relationships to uh, various kinds of characteristics and uh, behaviors and other sorts of things, not necessarily antisocial ones. So, you know, differences in uh, the way we reason, the way we process information, differences in the kinds of intelligences we have, um, a whole variety of things that we don't associate with any kind of um, abnormality, simply, you know, differences ac across a uh, statistical curve, so to speak. Of course, there also are people who have uh, suffered brain damage, um, and we, you know, suffered a condition that we would define as brain damage that can severely affect their behaviors. But that is not what we're talking about here. We're simply talking about some uh, uh, relatively subtle but real differences in some of these studies. People may have differences in brain chemistry that relate to all sorts of. Uh, capacities or functionalities um, of their personality, of their biology, and so on, but it doesn't mean that all of their behaviors are determined. Um, so, but I have to say that this is a hotly contested area in neuroscience and in the philosophy of mind. Um, part of my doctoral work relates to the philosophy of mind, neuroscience, and theology. There are neuroscientists uh, who would argue that all of our behaviors, all of our thoughts, all of our intentions are indeed determined by neuroscience. Um, and there are some philosophers of biology and philosophers of mind who would agree with that. Uh, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's a mainstream philosophical per position. Uh, certainly from the perspective, I would argue, from any kind of uh, 
um, ethical thought, certainly from the perspective of any kind of uh, Christian theological ethics. Um, there's an element of intentionality and rationality and will, however our brain chemistry affects us, um, that we have some uh, agency over, some, some freedom over. I just want to note it. It's a hotly disputed area. Um, but in any event, I, I have not seen an argument that suggests that brain chemistry absolutely determines um, sexual behaviors. There is no evidence that uh, uh, surgery, brain surgery, drug therapies, or any other form of conversion therapy can really change a person's sexual orientation. Um, there are, of course, uh, groups out there, some of them, uh, many of them religiously affiliated, many of them uh, affiliated with Christian organizations that, that try to suggest um, that some kind of conversion therapy, perhaps involving drugs, perhaps involving um, some kind of spiritual warfare, perhaps involving other kinds of conduct, would be able to change a person's fundamental orientation from uh, homosexual to heterosexual. And there simply is no evidence um, that this is the case or that any of these therapies really work. And uh, in fact, uh, there is some substantial evidence that these kinds of treatments can really be psychologically and, and spiritually damaging. Um, so obviously my perspective on these kinds of things is that they're really, whatever we ultimately think about the ethical issue, whatever we ultimately think uh, about how the church ought to respond um, to the question of, of homosexuality in our culture, uh, my perspective would be that this kind of approach is really not the appropriate approach. Okay, so this is a general overview of um, sort of the scientific perspectives on things, and as I've said, I do believe it's it reflects the the best scientific understanding that we have available to us today. And I think that, uh, however, we're going to think through this issue. Um, these basic realities, these basic reflections of the facts, are things that we need to be able to take into account.